we're actually going to go ahead and get started just because it's 45 minutes, which is pretty quick. Uh, and we've got a lot to talk to you guys about. Um, before we do that, uh, thank you for coming to this session. Uh, what we'll talk about today is Microsoft 365. And we'll go uh, pretty deep on this idea and concept of a first line worker. Um, if you saw Kirk's keynote yesterday or some of the news that came out yesterday, um, we've got some exciting stuff um, designed and, and really tailored for this category. Um, and we're excited about it. We want to share kind of um, what we've got planned. And then also, um, we've got some great kind of guests who are going to share their experience and their perspective on this category as well, um, including uh, Bruce Rogers from Forbes uh, and both Jenny and Danielle from Marriott Vacations. And so um, as we go through here, um, at the end, we'll have kind of a time for Q&A. Um, and we'd love to get your guys' questions and feedback as we go. So the kind of easiest place to start is to go back to this idea of digital transformation. Um, and what we've increasingly realized as we kind of look at the market and we look at uh, customers who are going through a digital transformation kind of journey, uh, it's really forcing organizations to reinvent how they do business, how they empower their workforce, and how they connect with their customers. And I think a great way to start this and to really set some context is actually look at a customer um, an organization that we worked uh, quite closely with um, called VCA, or Veterinary, Veterinary Clinics of America. And I'm going to let them kind of share their story here in a quick video. And I figured dogs and cats is a nice way to start. I never really know what my day is going to look like. But I get puppies and kittens, so that's fun. I'm a dog person. <laughs> Cats are great. They're just a little more independent. VCA is a very unique animal in itself, no pun intended. That sounds like my dog. We have about 815 animal hospitals across the country. We have 5,000 plus doctors, specialists, laboratories, uh, doggy daycare centers. You know, our goal is to try to support our own employees, giving them the right tools to run a successful hospital. I view these guys as my second family. I'm here in the hospital probably more hours than I am at home. <laughs> our employees that are on the first line, the doctors, the technicians, the hospital managers, they're the lifeblood of our company. Office 365 finally gave us that ability to communicate the way we did before. Okay, come right this way and we'll get you laid in. All right, we got it. In order for a patient to really get the best care, oftentimes it involves several of us across different specialties. So anything that gives me access to those clinicians, then I can focus on taking care of that patient. We have a solution like Office 365. We have the ability to have a network of 5,000 plus doctors come together to work on that same path. That creativity allows us to push the boundaries of what we thought we could do. And we're able to develop the internet collaboration network that we wanted. From connecting one hospital to another, to staffing the hospitals with Staff Hub, keeping inventory, any technology that's going to make us more available to do our jobs is going to really help our hospitals. There's one thing that always connects us together, which is the care for the pet. And Office 365 finally gives us the ability to communicate that with each other. Technicians and the doctors, they sleep in the cages. Hospital managers stay after to make sure everything's okay. The schedule, someone coming at 12, someone coming at 2 a.m., 4 a.m. That's why we work in the veterinary field, is you know, seeing those little fighters make it. So it's kind of tough to follow that going back to this idea of digital transformation, uh, but we'll give that a shot. Um, you'll actually see VCA come up here again uh, in a second video that we've got uh, later in this presentation. Um, and it's really because they've taken a bit of a leadership position in this space where uh, they've recognized the value of delivering tools not just to one part of their organization, but really the value that's unlocked when you deliver uh, tools across the entire organization and really empower uh, everyone from uh, the boardroom to that executive team uh, to that first line worker. Um, and that's really what we wanted to kind of talk about today is when we think about kind of successful digital transformations, it's those that actually take a bit more of an inclusive look. They recognize that to be successful, uh, to realize um, a lot of the value that they're setting um, out to achieve, it's actually about uh, delivering tools um, across the organization. That first line worker uh, is a bit unique. So this slide should look a little bit familiar, but what's really exciting about this for us is this category represents the majority of the workforce. 
they're 80% of the population. They're typically the first people in a customer's organization to meet with their customers. Uh, they're the first to see products and services in action. Um, and they're kind of the face of the brand. Uh, and I think actually, and I kind of like this part here, which is as we all traveled here today, we were dependent on a first line worker to get us here. When we checked into our hotel, uh, when we got on that flight, they're really defining that experience for organizations and for that customer. Um, and yet we've kind of overlooked them. We haven't actually empowered them with the right tools to do their job and really be super efficient. A lot of their day-to-day -day still plays out on a paper-based paper, uh, on a paper -based process. You walk into the back of a break room and you see the corporate announcement pinned up on a bulletin board. And I think we can do better, and I know we can. We have a bit of a unique vision. Um, I think Microsoft's position in a bit of a unique perspective uh, or a unique uh, opportunity in the market to really equip this category with the tools that they need. When we think about some of the challenges that these uh, workers have, um, it really comes back to the workplace that they operate in and, and how they go about their day to day. We see really maximizing the impact of this workforce across five key, five key pillars. The first is around culture and community. So when we think about that, we think about these workers are often in uh, remote or distributed environments. And so how do you go out and connect them? How do they feel more part of an organization, part of the brand, um, and a little bit more connected to that corporate mission, um, which really provides a nice compass for decision making and action for that individual. The second is on training and upskilling, which is we know employees want to be more valuable to their organizations. They want to continue to gain and apply new skills. And so we want to make sure that we're providing the right technology and the right services to them and to our customers to really enable a great training and upskilling experience for them. The third one is pretty critical, and it's about digitizing business process. And that really comes back to that idea that they've been overlooked. A lot of their day-to-day -day plays out on manual tasks, repetitive tasks, things that we've solved and can solve, um, and yet they've been overlooked. And so something as simple as taking uh, scheduling and allowing an organization to access their schedule, to trade schedules, to swap shifts, um, is really empowering for this category. And, and it might seem simple up front, but when we start realizing how much impact that has, how much more freedom that gives a worker, uh, it's really a, a way to go change and evolve your workplace. Uh, the last couple are on around delivering real-time expertise. That idea of as we empower these workers, the decisions they're making are more important so you have to make sure that you're providing them the right tools, the right information, and access to the right individuals in the organization to make the right decision. And then kind of the last one's around protection and minimizing cost. So they are just at, as at risk as maybe you and I are of a threat. Um, you know, the a front door to an organization um, exists uh, in the first line as it does in a corporate headquarters. And so making sure that we're extending protection across the organization to every employee, to every endpoint is really critical. Um, and then also doing that at the same time which provides kind of the lowest uh, total cost of ownership of a platform or solution for this organization. Because we know the economics here are different. There's a lot more of them. They're 80% of the workplace. They're 80% of some organizations, sometimes even higher. And so we want to make sure that we're providing great devices and a great platform to do that uh, effectively. Um, we actually announced earlier uh, this week the availability of some devices with our OEM partners, um, Acer, Lenovo, and HP, really designed for this category um, to go deliver a really compelling, streamlined, and secure experience. Um, we've got another video here that I was mentioning, and we'll, we'll kind of walk through this and, and really look at who these people are. They're the first line a global workforce two billion strong. People are our main asset. The tools and resources that we give them are absolutely critical to our success. In this time of digital transformation, their potential could be unlocked in completely new ways. I think it's a big deal that we can work wherever we are, whether it's one of us in the office or whether it's somebody out on our production line, we can take it to any device that we need to. Microsoft 365 helps us do that. They could be more connected to the company and one another, given new opportunities to grow their skills and thrive in their work. Now that we have Microsoft, we have a way to communicate that we didn't before. Our employees that are on the first line, the doctors, the technicians, the hospital managers, they're the lifeblood of our company. Any technology that's gonna make us more available to do our jobs is going to really help our hospitals. We brought on 20 employees and now we're running inventory management. 
what's on order, can we make it? And Microsoft 365 pretty much is the baseline of how we start running everything. We believe one solution that brings together the best of Microsoft could empower this first line workforce like never before. When we first went out to Microsoft and saw where Microsoft 365 was going, you could tell that was going to be the future, and, and that would give us a leap ahead. The single solution that Microsoft 365 provides us is everything that we need. All workers are welcome with Microsoft 365. So we introduced Microsoft 365 earlier this year, which really brings together the best of our uh, best of products across Office, across Windows, and across EMS. Uh, we introduced uh, two offers for our enterprise or commercial customers earlier this year. Uh, and then uh, yesterday we introduced Microsoft 365 F1. F1 is designed specifically for that first line worker. It includes kind of first line worker productivity tools like Microsoft Staff Hub. Uh, it includes uh, the tools and services you need to go connect your organization with Yammer and Teams. It has great value in Windows 10 to really unlock and support first line worker scenarios. You think about a remote device, you think about a shared device experience, they all need to be managed, they need to be protected, and you need to provide that value there as well. Uh, and then lastly, it includes uh, a lot of value from EMS, our Enterprise Mobility Security Suite. Um, with the idea of as you kind of welcome these workers into the workforce, as you deliver them the tools that they need, you need to extend that protection to all devices and that management to all devices. Um, this slide kind of details through kind of what's included there, um, but we've also got kind of additional details on that uh, online. With that, actually I'd like to turn it over to a couple of our guest speakers and talk a little bit more about uh, some of the trends that they're seeing in the workplace and then actually have uh, them share their experience as they've rolled out technologies to their first line workers. And so with that, I'll hand it over to Bruce. Thank you, Andrew. So I'm Bruce Rogers. I'm the Chief Insights Officer at Forbes. It's just one of those titles you get when you've been at some place for a long time and you have gray hair like I do. But I am uh, the Chief Executive of the Insights business, which is a research business that I founded several years ago to help organizations, in fact, like Microsoft, understand particularly the pain points C-suite. And we were really privileged and honored to work with Andrew and his team to bring to light some research that helps um, kind of level set where the thinking is uh, today amongst the C-suite and their thinking around how they're uh, empowering first-line workers with the digital tools that they need to actually uh, accomplish all the great things that we saw in the videos from uh, the VCA and what we'll hear later from uh, Marriott Vacations from the folks up here. So uh, the research that we did, and I have some notes, I have my, uh, my uh, technical device here to give me some of the notes. Um, I might have to explain exactly how this works, but it's, it's called paper, and, and you read it from top to bottom, left to right. Um, but it, literally, the research just came out of the field as, we were, as I was getting on a plane to come here. So uh, as I'm looking at the statistics and taking notes, this is literally uh, hot off the presses, if you will. Uh, and so here, here's some thoughts. So here's kind of the, the big reveal you can see here. Everyone says digital tools to empower first-line workers is important, 90%, okay? It's not surprising uh, that, you know, uh, leaders, uh, that the C-suite leaders would say that. But there's this other part of the research that's showing, you know, there's kind of a good news, bad news. Everybody wants to get there, but are, where are they in that process? And, and less than four and 10 are saying that they are making uh, significant progress here. And so in the, a lot of the research we do, uh, digital transformation is certainly at the top of the agenda, certainly of every CEO. So how many here are in the midst of a digital transformation ever in your organization? Okay, yeah, that's, that's kind of, you know, that's 92% of you actually, as I counted it, in the room said that, agree with that. Um, so we surveyed 300 of the C-suite to help understand it. 100% um, of them were involved 
in, in the decision to bring digital tools to their workforce. 80% uh, uh, said that they are personally taking a leadership role in that process. So these are C-suite executives on the front lines of enabling first-line workers. Um, and so here's, here's some interesting uh, thoughts. Um, again, this, this kind of um, good news, bad news. Um, you know, the majority uh, of workers, as we see here, are first-line workers um, in, in, in these companies, yet only uh, half say they have fully connected and empowered more than half of the workers to do their job as they expect them to do. So that's half of half, so that's 25% for those of you keeping score and took statistics. Um, and as, we, as you see here in the slide, all say it's important. And in fact, another 73% say it's a key competitive differentiator for them in the future. So everyone's on board, right? But who's walking the walk as well as talking it? Seven in 10 say that um, the automation tools that we're talking about here uh, will elevate and augment first-line workers' jobs. So they're seeing this not as a way to uh, cut um, headcount or reduce worker, the workforce. Uh, only 21% say it's a tool uh, to replace jobs. And, and certainly that will be the case, but it's more about augmenting and in, enhancing how we do our jobs. And, and a word that I keep hearing for first-line workers and what connects them and the skill set in the future is all about how do we make first-line workers more empathetic, increase their empathy with customers. A more empathetic worker is, is going to create a more satisfied customer, and how do you make them more, uh, give them more empathy? You give them the tools and the data that helps them understand where that customer is and wherever that their journey is at that moment that you have contact with them. Um, so these tools are only going to be more important in the future, not less. Um, they see a tools gap um, uh, around, uh, certainly around quality, was mentioned number one, 30%, as an important uh, process of this, of uh, incorporating these tools. Collaboration was next, followed by communications and adaptability. So this, it's not just... Uh, frontline with customers, but really empowering the first line worker with the skill sets that they need uh, to, to do their job if they're going to be that truly the person who helps uh, convey a, full, a more fuller uh, sense of empathy with the customer. Less than a quarter, 24% say they're fully, fully prepared to address those skill gaps. So there's work to be done. Um, and this idea that you know we're not quite as prepared as we liked, as we would like, only three in ten say they have a clear strategy of how they're going to do this going into the future. Um, Eighty-one percent say they want their first-line workers to have more autonomy. That's a good thing to make the decisions at the moment. It's it's most important to the customer, but only twenty-two percent say that they have fully empowered the first-line workers to have autonomy. And only 29% they um, say they are fully effective at having first line, at sharing the information that they gather from first line workers and acting on that information in real time. And the connective tissue between the first line and executive decision making is obviously the digital tools that we're talking about and why you're here for this whole conference. And unfortunately, time, I don't think, is your friend. I think there's an urgency around this that I think maybe should speed up this conversation around talk to talk to walk to walk. 70% uh, of the C-suite that we talked to said that they're on a three-plus-year horizon to incorporate this. Think about how much the world has changed in three years. 35% have a five-plus-year horizon. Okay, that was my reaction exactly. Just think back five years, what has changed in what we do every day in business. Almost everything we do has changed in five years. So speed is uh, not your friend. I mean, speed is your friend and time is not your friend. I think 
The first to incorporate these uh, uh, organizations will be winners. Some of the barriers, as you might expect, budget, talent, and turnover. Um, but I think education will help overcome those barriers. And only less than a third say that first-line workers have access right now to the business apps that they need to do their jobs well, access to the cloud and production management systems and, and uh, other software that helps um, them do their business. But the good news is that at, that's expected to double in three years. So uh, hopefully what you hear today and throughout the conference will help you educate your management on the need for speed around engaging first-line workers. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So with that, we're actually going to turn it over and, and we'll have uh, merit vacations, both Jenny and Danielle actually walk us through their experience in terms of actually uh, delivering and, and really enabling this part of their workforce. Thank you, Andrew. Um, I I appreciate you having us here today. I think Microsoft um, invited us because, because we are super passionate about this, maybe even um, borderline obsessed uh, with, with this first line worker. And I love um, hearing from Bruce, and this was my first time hearing from him and from an organization such as Forbes talking about this first line worker is this is what um, I've been focused on. I've been in HR and internal communications for more than 15 years, and I can say without a doubt that this has been the number one thing that um, has, has been the challenge for me and my team is how do we get information to those associates to do their jobs well? I mean, they, they spend more time at work, this, these first line workers, most of the time than they do at home. We all do, right? And how do we, how do we get the information they need to feel confident to go out and take care of, um, take care of our owners and guests for, for in, in our industry for um, merit vacations worldwide? So what, what I mean about communications is a couple of things. Getting the right message, what could be training, a new point of sale tool, a new way to, to make the bed, um, to an inspirational message from our CEO that we did on a video. But nobody has, you know, everyone has these devices in their pocket most of the time. Most of these first line workers, they're getting all sorts of information, traffic alerts, news alerts, what's new at the red box down the street, right? but we're not talking to them through this device. Um, the other things, the right timing, the right audience, as well as potentially the right language for a lot of our associates. It could depend on that, right? So what happens for us about five years ago, we reorganized our HR department and we centralized a lot of our processes and we took away our best chance of communicating and getting this key information out to our associates away from those resorts. So who did that task fall to? It fell to the managers, it fell to the supervisors. Those, those people that are out there working both sides, right? They're doing the work, they're making the beds, they're running the schedules, like Andrew was saying, they're putting schedules together, sometimes even for themselves, because they're supervisors, so sometimes they're, they're, they're hourly themselves. And, and that's where the squeeze is happening. How, how are we solving for it today? Not, not, not by here, so I'm gonna put that down. The way we're solving for it today, print and post just like it sounds. We send out a PDF, can you print and post this? We send out a print and share. Please print and share this with your associates. Cas please cascade this message. We have a video from our CEO. Please try to get everyone in the break room or maybe one of the hotel rooms to have everyone watch the video from our CEO. We're hoping they're watching it. And then hotlines. Hello, 1980, right? Really, hotlines? Hotlines became big this past month for me. Big. Both internal and external, to be honest. Um, but internally, we went through, you might have heard er about Irma. We're actually located here in Orlando. Um, but we have resorts in, in St. Thomas, South Florida, Orlando, Hilton Head. Over 25 of our resorts were impacted by Irma and Maria. Earthquake, anyone? Oh, and there's a volcano. I don't know if you knew about that in Bali, our newest resort. But I'm going to come back to that. I'm going to turn it over to Danielle, who's going to talk to you a little bit about how we're solving for this. Thank you, Jenny. 
So a little over a year ago, we started looking at how we could use technology to address some of these challenges that we were having. Um, and one thing that we noticed was that our frontline workers were starting to use our HR mobile app to view their pay, which is obviously important to them, um, record time and things like that. So we knew that they would be receptive to technology, um, but we needed to fill some additional gaps. And so what we found was that the kiosk bundle at the time um, would address most of those needs. And what we wanted to do was focus on three main applications, our company portal, um, which is on the SharePoint platform, uh, Yammer, and the video portal. Um, so our company intranet is actually where we're gonna get all of our policies and those, uh, our, those associates have to have access to that. So that was kind of a no-brainer for us. Um, Yammer has actually become a, a critical part of our communications platform over the last year. And it's, it's not just us communicating information to them, um, but they're also communicating amongst their teams through Yammer. And they're also sharing best practices and letting our corporate office have a view into what's happening at the resorts. That's just, we haven't had that capability before. You know, that was something that we were kind of blind to. So to have that has been valuable. And the video portal's really transforming the way that we provide training to our associates. You know, we still have our traditional LMS platform, we still have in-person training, um, but when we do that, we have to produce DVDs, distribute those to our resorts, um, and making changes to that can be cumbersome and really expensive, so what we found is that we weren't doing that very frequently. So having something um, that's online and can be consumed by their own device and in their place of, of work um, gave us a whole nother opportunity. So think of a housekeeper, a new housekeeper who's in the villa um, doing a room clean and they can actually watch what our best practices or our standards are and watch that video while they're doing the clean or a bartender who, they're not working at a computer, right? They're working in the outlet, they're working at the bar, um, so they can watch a video on how to break down a piece of equipment, a margarita machine, or we can do a video that's a drink of the day or a drink of the week, and we can demonstrate that on a self-produced video and have them view that and watch that right at the bar. Um, you know, those are all capabilities we didn't have before. Staff Hub wasn't available to us when we first started uh, looking at this early last year. I wish it would have been because it would have been a lot easier for us to sell to our leadership team. Um, but now that's become um, a key part of our strategy as well. Um, we started with our call center group. Um, they were actually using Yammer to post uh, shift swap requests and things and manage that through Yammer, which we thought was great, but it wasn't ideal for what they were looking to do, but it did give them um, what they needed at the time. So as soon as Staff Hub was announced, you know, they jumped right on that and they started using that pretty much day one. Then we, uh, we moved to our resorts, and so we piloted with, uh, with five resorts. Um, the first one that we met with, you know, they, they didn't even have any training, they didn't have any information, they had um, already downloaded the app and started using it before we met with them. And that just really goes to show how easy um, Staff Hub is to use because they were able to pick that up. Um, and when we met with them, they, they told us, we're like, you know, we just want to make sure like that this is um, something that your site is going to want to leverage. And, and one of the gentlemen told us, he's like, my team is waiting behind that wall um, because as soon as this meeting's over, they're all going to have the app downloaded because it's, it's actually, you know, an expectation now for them. And so this is something we've been holding back from them. So we, we felt pretty good about that. Um, the rest of our pilot sites have, have been successful so far. Um, four of those resorts um, were impacted, unfortunately, by Hurricane Irma. And we're so grateful that we had Staff Hub um, and Yammer, actually, um, during that time. You know, when you're going through a crisis, your need to fluctuate your schedules and your associate availability is going to be more frequent than under normal conditions. So being able to use Staff Hub to change schedules, um, you know, that was key for our leadership team. Um, they also were able to use the chat feature to communicate amongst the team, let their supervisors know they were safe, um, and provide updates. We had a couple locations that were actually taking the 1980s hotline and um, providing those updates in Staff Hub so that our associates were able to get those updates real time without having to think, well, let me go call in and see if there's an update. 
there's no update. Well, let me call again and again. I mean, that's just wasted time for everybody. So um, we were really pleased with, um, with Staff Hub during the hurricane. We wish that all of our impacted resorts uh, would have had Staff Hub avail available to them, but they will before, before our next crisis. And, and just to add to that real quick, um, you know, I was joking about the hurricanes and the earthquake, and, um, but in all seriousness, I haven't seen my desk since Labor Day. Um, I've been in a hurricane, actually it became a disaster war room after, um, after the earthquake hit last Tuesday, and um, I, I, <laughs> this is a total true story. We were sitting um, Thursday in this disaster meeting going through everything that we're working through, and um, the power went out to our corporate office right down the street here. I, I can tell you in, in my 17 years there, the power's only gone out twice. Um, so, it, you know, again, we're getting reminders after reminder after reminder. And I can't tell, me, tell you how many people texted me while we were sitting there with the power out saying, can we go, can we go, can we go? And to have some type of a tool where we could have gotten a message out really quick to the device in their pocket, not the one that's not working because the power's down, especially for desktop workers, and there's no network available. To be able to pull out, send a quick message, buildings closed, you can go home, would have been easy. Um, but it, it's been a huge impact to, to our business, these hurricanes. Um, having the scheduling feature, I, I can tell you our, our remediation companies have been great. I don't know how many people were kicked out of rooms here in Orlando because of the hurricane. Um, but everywhere from, from Marco Island to South Beach to Hilton Head Island, we had um, more than 15 of our resorts were closed. They were evacuated, they were closed. Even Hilton Head Island, we had, um, we kept waiting for the governor to make the call on the evacuation. Um, again, do we, do we hand out a piece of paper to our associates with a hotline on it? Or is there a device that we're gonna be able to communicate to them? Well, of course, you know, we're still kind of we're not quite there at some of our resorts, so we're handing out pieces of paper saying we're evacuating. Same thing for South Florida. Coming back online was huge, because the first thing we needed to do was, especially for all the resorts without power, was um, we needed to secure them, right? Because we had to bring in our loss prevention to secure the resort. What's the first thing people do when there's no power? Unfortunately, it's looting. So between security, our landscapers to clear debris, to even make it to the resort was huge, but we needed to communicate with those teams, not to the whole resort, not to all of our associates, but to those teams. And then eventually we brought back in engineering, then we brought back housekeeping, and we're still doing that at some of our resorts. Sales and uh, marketing, the same thing, they're a whole different side of the business, and we had to bring them back at a different time, depending on when that remediation company told us the rooms would be available. So having this type of a tool available the new Staff Hub tool, scheduling, Yammer, all of these things are, are so important for us. Turn it back over to yep, Daniel. Great. Um, so our plan is we're gonna be rolling out to the rest of our organization. Um, as soon as we get back from Ignite, our plan was to do that in September. We had to delay that a little bit, um, but we'll be, we'll be doing it as soon as we get back. So we're excited to see all the new things that are coming this week. Um, but one of, the, one of the main things that we think has been um, part of our success and part of the reason we've had um, great adoption on all of these tools so far is that we've really given our, um, our associates a choice. So we haven't made um, these tools, Yammer or Staff Hub, Video Portal, um, something that's mandatory for them. Um, we meet with our leadership team, we explain the capabilities, um, and if associates want to still call that hotline, if they still want that printed schedule, that's something that's available to them. What we've seen so far is that that's, that's not what they want. Um, again, they, they have that expectation, but at least the choice is theirs. They're each rolling it out a little differently. For us, our resorts vary by size, by leadership team, and by culture. So for us to be able to let our leadership team tailor how they do that rollout um, has been helpful. Yeah, and, a, and a, one other key component has been the partnership, I think, be, because I'm not in IT, I'm in HR, uh, but the partnership between uh, Microsoft, we've, we've worked with some of the Microsoft people to get um, input from us. I know there's a couple other ways you can do that. And then just the partnership in the business. If you are looking to do this at your, um, at your company, definitely it's, it's not an all or nothing thing. And we've had a ton of governance meetings, sub-governance meetings to go through, um, you know, how, how are we gonna roll this out? But uh, this, I, I couldn't have asked for 
a more a better use case. I, I would have preferred not to have it, but um, with with this past month. So we appreciate the time um, for having us here. Yeah. Thank you. And I think what's really compelling is like that those first line scenarios, those experiences, like those are hard experiences, right? But when you go and actually deliver the tools and you, you empower those employees in the right way, you really unlock some pretty compelling stories where hey, they can be more efficient because they can be communicated with in real time. You know, you can help, you know, protect your guests, protect your properties because all of a sudden you're actually getting insights back from the first line to the organization by basically bringing them in and, and welcoming them into kind of that digital age. And so, super powerful. Uh, as we kind of transition off, what's just as kind of interesting and exciting here is actually, it's not only a huge opportunity for our customers to really transform. Uh, we've seen a lot of great partners really focus in here and, and really help uh, deliver services to those first line workers. Content and Code is a great partner uh, who's really kind of taken a leadership position here um, and really focused on these first line workers, um, rolling out scheduling and, and, and shift solutions, um, helping really scale to encompass this category as well. So scaling managed services and support across the organization. Um, automating some first-line processes like we talked about and so there's a really rich opportunity there as well. Um, with that, we've got some great kind of traditional next steps, but we've got some booths down on the uh, Ignite Shore floor, floor, so please stop by and say hi. Um, with that, we'll kind of close and open up for some Q&A and discussion. Yeah, please. Good morning. Um, so I work for a manufacturer in Florida and we were impacted by the hurricane as well and we had a lot of facilities we had to shut down and whatnot. Um, and we looked at uh, using the Yammer tool uh, to do some communication but what we found was that a lot of our, uh, our folks didn't have an account set up for them and a lot of the shift workers in particular had been using shared accounts um, and so they didn't have their own specific email address and what we ended up doing was just using the traditional methods for communicating to people. I would just be interested in, in how are you guys approaching that in terms of um, you know, are, you, are you working towards getting every employee a sign on into Office 365 and, and basically saying, hey, this is the way we're going to go do business and so you need to sign on and you need to. So if I can just understand that transition. Um, so, yes, uh, by the end of Q4, every associate that works for our company will be licensed with Office 365. Um, we have gone with a multi-license model, so our information workers are planned for the E3, and actually they, they all have that already. Um, and we have the kiosk bundle or the new F1 bundle for all of our uh, first-line workers. So um, each associate um, will be licensed. Adrian Rose, I'm with uh, TD Bank. I'm the service owner for all, just about everything, 0365 in the organization. Uh, we've got about 20,000 frontline workers in what we call our traditional stores, the branches. Uh, first of all, I, I think uh, there's a great opportunity for Andrew to leverage uh, some of the tools in the lab for Bruce, maybe get him a surface. I think when we were talking about ink, we weren't talking about paper and ink. We were. That's yeah, right. Just, <laughs> we chatted about that this morning. Actually, I think that's a great opportunity you should leverage there. Yeah, uh, I'd be really interested in talking to Danielle uh, specifically a little later if if you're available. Uh, we've been looking at Staff Hub under the K licensing. Uh, part of our challenge is the uh, ever-changing landscape of Microsoft licensing. Uh, we've, we're on an E3, we've considered E5 with the K licenses, so uh, my, my feedback to the team would be to make sure you've got some commitment on the licensing plans because that's sure. been a challenge for us. Yeah. We're also moving to uh, give our users IDs across the organization because we're, uh, we're not all there, but we have a, a huge force of frontline users. And uh, Staff Hub to us was uh, uh, a low-level option because of its positioning in the suite and it was new. Uh, but I'd be really interested in hearing more about how you've consolidated the experience under the F1 licensing yeah. and, uh, and the tools you're enabling for those frontline users. So may maybe you could, uh, ha have, you, have you done the adoption on those pilots? What, what's, uh, what's been your, um, your plan? Well, we've actually used, um, Staff Hub has actually been our driver um, for engaging with the first line workers at our pilot resorts. Um, you know, 
I will say, so far we're not going, we're not planning on taking advantage of all of the tools within the F1 bundle. It's a little bit more than what we need for day one. So that's why we're focusing on um, the four main applications with um, Yammer, Video Portal, and Staff Hub, and then our company Internet, which is based on SharePoint, but they're going to be limited to just our company Internet. They're not going to have uh, full access to SharePoint. Um, but really, we met with our leaders from the resorts and engaged them in a dialogue on what their associates would need. Um, but so far, really, they've opened, you know, they've been welcoming the technology. You know, it's not something that we've had to force on them. You know, one thing we've, we've experienced with Yammer is, you know, there's friendly competition. And so, you know, whenever we see a holiday or a special event, you know, our Yammer posts metrics go through the roof because the sites are trying to one-up each other and showing you know pictures of different things that they're doing at the events. They love showing the culture at their sites. And so that's really helped us with adoption as well. But I'd be happy to talk to you more about licensing and how we, we planned that out. That's a great question. Yeah, I'm happy to help as well. Bruce, don't forget to help Bruce. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. White glove service. and the language barrier. Have you looked at adoption broken down by languages and, and seen if that affected the adoption rates at your pilot sites? Yep, um, we're, we're still looking through that. Um, right now, the majority of the adoption at our pilot sites has been with um, uh, people who speak English as a first language, but um, one or two of the resorts have started to push that boundary with some of the other groups um, who don't have English as a first language. And um, we're honestly, because of the hurricanes, I haven't been able to get back and find out what's happening. Um, well, I don't one, one thing to mention though with that is, um, you know, I think the, when you're referring to yeah. pilots, she's referring to our staff hub pilots. Right. When we um, started our digital transformation um, earlier, prior to staff hub, and we did our first pilot, we actually, we were very, uh, we wanted to make sure that we had representation from all of our different lines of business and from all of our geographic locations, and we needed to have that day one because we wanted to include their feedback and their needs to make sure that we weren't thinking of just the U.S. We really wanted to take a global perspective. So our initial pilots for Office 365 included le leaders from those areas, and Absolutely. their feedback was key. Yep. Yep. Yeah, please. Um, you are talking about introducing the software tools from Microsoft to uh, all sorts of associates, starting from cleaners to bartenders. Um, what are the devices that they consume those services? Are they personal devices, or corporate devices, or mobile devices, or something else? We have a combination. So at our resorts, we do have some devices that are um, company-owned devices. Some of those are dedicated um, for our manager staff. Um, you know, they do typically have a dedicated device. Um, then we do have some shared devices at the resort level, depending on the job function. Um, but then we also, we absolutely have personal devices in use. All right. So you, yeah, you actually embrace the BYOD concept for... We are starting to, yes. And, um, you know, that would be one um, recommendation that we would have is to be sure to work through all of those policies. You know, we brought in leaders from our um, HR organization, our legal security, and we, we really address those at the front end to ensure that um, everyone was on board before we, we started rolling this out. All right. Thank you. I wasn't pretty good. that uh, I'm sure we've got some time after if you want to come up and ask some side questions but thank you for coming and um, yeah enjoy the rest of the week <laughs>